Danny Langsdorf was a typical McMinnville athlete, a Linfield staffer's kid growing up playing every sport in every season, even before he enrolled at Mack High. He was about seventh grade. Uh, there was a good, good group of kids in his class, uh, and he kind of just knew they had uh, kind of, you know, kind of the it. I mean, it factor as far as you know, being good kids, good people, uh, good students, and good athletes. In the fall of 1987, Danny began his four years as a three-sport athlete. He was quarterback of the promising freshman team, but that didn't last long. The varsity team was racked by injuries, and they ran out of quarterbacks in the middle of the third game. Langsdorf was home, getting ready for a date. When he was summoned to Wartman Stadium, he dressed and became varsity quarterback during the second half. I know that, that we had a, just a rash of injuries that freshman year, and the, the plan was never to bring him up. You know, it was to keep our group together. We were kind of a group that had had success in middle school all the way up through. We, had, we were decimated injury-wise. You know, freshmen, it's tough, you know, I, I think for all people around in that decision, but I thought at the time it was the, it, it was the best decision uh, that we had available. I just called him. And, Get him down here to play, and he, and he finished out the year, and then you know move on from you know sophomore, junior, and senior year from there. Metro League football was serious business, with smaller Mac High grouped in with Tigard, Glencoe, and Jesuit, all state championship contenders. The wins came few and far between. At one point, McMinnville lost 21 straight games during Danny's career. <laughs> We used to kind of laugh about us being the team from uh, McMinnville playing those schools just because they would roll out 100 players. Um, and I think, you know, our senior year, we might address 25 varsity football players. And so, yeah, we had a tough uh, three years of varsity football. You know, they just, they came to play, you know, no matter what the situation. I don't think, from my point of view, I never heard any moaning and groaning from them at all. You know, I think they just wanted to play and, and put the best you know, foot forward they possibly could. Being a coach's son, he knew the game. He was always studying, worked super hard. And that's always what kind of stood out to me was he was doing everything right very early and, and it showed on the field and his success. Danny Langsdorf also competed in basketball and baseball for all four of his high school years. He competed, no matter what, basketball or f baseball and, and football, you know, I got the opportunity to coach him in baseball and he competed, you know, every day coming out to get better. You know, he's a better quarterback than he was an outfielder, but he wanted to get be better as a baseball player. You know, and I said he worked at it. You know, he's willing to give a lot to get something, you know, I mean, to, to make himself better. Now it was the thing was, we, we all played uh, multiple sports, you know, three sport athletes, Danny, being a baseball, football, and basketball guy, I'll tell you this, that uh, I would say football obviously was his best sport. Uh, basketball, uh, we love to go watch Danny play because he was a rebounder and couldn't shoot at all. So it was kind of an interesting uh, dynamic. Langsdorf was also active around school, coaching powder puff football, he was a member of M Club, the Honor Society, student government, and he had the job everyone wanted, managing the Action Quarter student store. Everybody did everything at that time. You know, you were an athlete, you were involved in um, youth groups, and you did the school uh, store and stuff like that. He was involved in everything. But that was kind of the day and age where you did, you did everything. Growing up in McMinnville was, it was special. You know, it was a town at that time under probably 20,000 people, a school of 900 students, you know, way different than it is now. And so we all kind of had to do that. And, and Danny was very involved in everything. Despite McMinnville's one loss record on the football field, Danny was a college prospect. He impressed in off season camps and led the North to victory in the Shrine All-Star game. You know, the thing that always stood out was if you go and you look at throughout his high school career, we didn't win ball games, but then he goes plays in the Shrine game, plays great. And I thought that was 
um, super reflective on him was he never complained about the losses. He was just steady all the time. And that was the thing that uh, being an offensive lineman, uh, I really enjoyed about him. Danny could have stayed home and played at Linfield where his father, Ed, was an assistant coach. But he took a chance on himself and joined the Boise State Broncos. Langsdorf became a starter at Boise State during two of his first years. But when the Broncos switched coaches from Skip Hall to Pokey Allen, Danny lost the starting job and decided to return home to Linfield. He had, he had uh, all the skill set to be uh, successful at a, at a program like Boise State. And sometimes it, circumstances weigh in that, that don't go your way. So he wanted to play. That was the cool thing about Danny. He didn't want to warm the bench or wait for something to happen before he got his shot. He wanted to play and contribute and uh, to compete. Uh, that's what you loved about him. And he and Robbie Kristoff came back from Boise State and helped us, God, two great seasons, 94-95. And I thought it was great that they were able to come back together and Danny be six, uh, so successful and, and Ed get to coach his son. I mean, that goes a long ways with just parent-coach thing is a hard, is a hard thing. And, and both of them being successful with it in a small town um, it, it was great. I, I was really happy for both of them. Ed Langsdorf was now head coach of the Cats, and Danny's return in 1994 was a big hit. He threw for 2,000 yards and led Linfield to postseason. His November 12th performance against SOU was a classic, passing for a then-school record 439 yards and five touchdowns. Rector and Payne in the backfield. Abden goes in motion from the near side to the far side. Langsdorf play action fake roll out. Has a wide open man in the back of the end zone. Touchdown. That's number 83, Rob Guthrie, the second string tight end in the game. College career over, it was a no brainer. Danny Langsdorf was going to coach football, and he has done so. 26 seasons straight and counting, in college and in the pros. He's knowledgeable. He's fun to be, he's pleasant to be around, he's upbeat as can do. I think he does a good job with relationships and a big part of, of coaching is being able to get along with people, be collaborative and take input one way or the other. You know, sometimes you're the assistant coach and you got to answer to a coordinator. Now, obviously he's a coordinator and doing well, but I, you know, Ad Rutschman used to always say, hire the person. And uh, so he is a great person. That's the best part is the person that he is, um, getting to know him on a, on a personal level um, and his wife and his kids um, has been, that's the everlasting part of this thing. Um, the football is great, um, but it's over and uh, the friendship still remains. So that's, um, that's been the best part. He's, he's an awesome guy, loves to have a good time somebody I can always call. We, we actually talked often um, throughout my NFL career. Um, so he's just, he's a guy you want in your inner circle for sure. During his days as offensive coordinator at Oregon State, Langsdorf made a very special gesture, donating a kidney to Lori Cavanaugh, wife of Beaver's offensive line coach, Mike Cavanaugh. No, that was incredible. And those were meetings, you know, you, you found, you know, Cav would talk about, hey, geez, Lori is struggling, you know, she, we need a kidney, but, you know, and, and uh, you know, Danny says, well, I'll get tested. I'll, I'll find out if I'm a match. And you're thinking, well, that's a long shot. You know what I'm saying? Well, Danny's a match. Unbelievable. You talk about just a selfless act and, and uh, doing something for somebody you love and, and uh, you know, it's kind of the, the football world summed up. I mean, everybody uses like the football teams and families as, as uh, you know, that's kind of what it is. And, and uh, I mean, there's no greater example than, than that. His current address is in Philadelphia, where he is offensive coordinator for Temple University. Today, we welcome Danny Langsdorf to the McMinnville High School Hall of Fame.